Is this organic? Mmm. All right. All right, all right. Green Man here with the goods. Just wanted to talk about Pfizer, one of the companies involved in making a C word vaccine. You know, we're all tired of hearing about that. Uh, I am disappointed, as I have been for months in the leadership who've only talked about vaccinations and haven't been talking about vitamin D, vitamin C, or uh, elderberry extract things that you could do to boost your immune system because it is a flu virus if vaccines worked in, you know, preventing everybody from contracting the flu virus, then we wouldn't have a flu season. Not to say that, you know, vaccines aren't an important part of inoculating our population and making sure everybody is healthy, but I think people really need to do a little bit more research into what it takes to get a vaccine trialed and on the market, as well as, uh, you know, what is involved in a vaccine. Um, uh, the same way I would tell people to research uh, genetically modified organisms, but that's just me. That's just me personally. Um, I study chemistry. I don't want anybody to think that I'm a conspiracy theorist or uh, anything like that, even though the dictionary definition of a conspiracy is just something that is discussed behind closed doors that you're unaware of. So uh, if somebody's planning a surprise party for your birthday, well, then that's a conspiracy. And if you have a theory, somebody is planning a surprise party for your birthday, well, then you are a conspiracy theorist. Uh, but regardless, back to the topic, Pfizer Chief Executive Albert Aburla pocketed about $5.6 million after selling stock. Uh, earlier in the week, he said there was going to be some positive news uh, about a vaccine, basically saying... He would say uh, most likely that they're um, closer to getting it rolled out and on the shelves uh, right before flu season. So obviously their stock jumped. So it seems uh, kind of interesting to me that he had announced something that was likely going to increase the value of his stock. And then immediately, immediately sold 62% of the shares of the company and pocketed millions of dollars, literally millions of dollars. Sounds like a pump and dump to me. It would kind of be like me um, talking about and I have a video on it, uh, phyto remediation and micro remediation and telling everybody, hey, I'm in the works working with uh, oil companies to make sure that the environment is clean everywhere we go. And you can still drill oil and drastically uh, mitigate any, any issues to the environment, you know, that would theoretically boost the prices of whatever company that I would have that would be responsible for, uh, you know, um, distributing the seeds, the plants and fungus capable of absorbing pollution. And then immediately after, with no concrete evidence that these partnerships are actually taking place after my stock goes up, inevitably, because people are emotional creatures and generally the stock market is not necessarily based on the value or cryptocurrency market is not necessarily based on the value of products and what they can bring to the table, but what people speculate the value of those products are and what they think that they may be able to bring to the table, uh, especially in the cryptocurrency space because they lack the regulation for people to really get down to the nitty gritty and understand if they haven't been here uh, for a long time, what is being valued accurately and what is being valued uh at that price based off of speculation and then saying, hey, um, I'm going to sell this company. I, I don't want it anymore and I'm not going to take any part in leadership or directing them to go on in what I have expressed to individual investors as my vision and why it would be successful. That would sound shady to me. That's that's just me personally. But I'm also going to include some clips uh, about Pfizer from a channel that I think is really, really um, well put together. Uh, the Crypto Well channel. Check it out, check them out on Twitter, check them out on YouTube, um, very informative. The vaccine is coming out soon. I won't be talking about it, but I will tell you about the company behind it. The UK government has purchased 30 million doses of COVID mRNA vaccine from a company called the Indosis by the end of the year and 1.3 billion doses next year. News just out. Pfizer says it could be ready to apply for emergency use authorization for its COVID-19 vaccine candidate by late November. It won't be mandatory at the beginning, but judging from the large orders, a gradual plan will be implemented to persuade and incentivize people to take the vaccine and put restrictions on people that don't, along with shaming campaigns. I want to tell them that their decision, they need to understand, will not affect only their lives, which at the end of the day, it is their uh, judgment but will affect the lives of others. Because if they don't vaccinate, they will become the weak link that will allow this virus to replicate. Some will say that this is conspiracy theory. So let's just stick to the facts. The government trusted Pfizer to vaccinate the British people. So it's logical to want to inquire into the company's track record in safety and ethics. After all, they must be trustworthy in fighting for humanity, right? What I'm about to tell you is only 20% of their rap sheet, otherwise this video would be hours long. But you can go to our website where you can see the full list. Pfizer received the biggest criminal fine in US history as part of a $2.3 billion settlement with federal prosecutors for mispromoting medicines and for paying kickbacks to compliant doctors. 
Pfizer pleaded guilty to misbranding the painkiller, Bextra, by promoting the drug for uses that were not approved by medical regulators. In the 90s, they were involved in defective heart valves that led to the deaths of more than 100 people. The company had deliberately misled regulators about the hazards. The company agreed to pay $10.75 million to settle Justice Department charges. Pfizer also had a class action suit with a $60 million settlement over Resilin, diabetes medication that resulted in patients dying from acute liver failure said to be caused by the drug. In the UK, they have been fined nearly £90 million by the UK's competition watchdog for unfair pricing to the NHS after hiking up the cost of an anti-epilepsy drug by 2,500%, charging the taxpayer an extra £48 million than the actual price, which is £2 million per year. Buying competitors and mis-selling drugs weren't the only factors in making them the giant of a company they are. Their special relations with doctors and medical professionals has also helped. In 2004, Pfizer's subsidiary agreed to pay $430 million to resolve criminal charges that it paid physicians to prescribe its epilepsy drug, Neurontin, to patients with ailments for which the medication was not approved. In 2010, a federal jury found that Pfizer committed racketeering fraud in its marketing of the drug. Pfizer disclosed that during a six-month period the previous year, it had paid $20 million to some 4,500 doctors and other medical professionals for speaking on the company's behalf. 2012, the US Securities and Exchange Commission announced that it had reached a $45 million settlement with Pfizer to resolve charges that its subsidiaries had bribed overseas doctors and other healthcare professionals to increase foreign sales. But some of you might say, they are a business and they don't get to make billions a year by not being competitive, they're still trying to help humanity. Pfizer was sued in a US federal court by Nigerian families who accused the company of testing a dangerous new antibiotic called Troven on children without parents' consent and using their children as human guinea pigs. A panel of medical experts concluded that Pfizer had violated international law and the company agreed to pay $75 million to settle the lawsuits in Nigerian courts. The US case was settled for an undisclosed amount. Amid widespread criticism of high pricing for poor countries and in particular AIDS medications, Pfizer offered to donate a two-year supply of its drug Diflucan, worth $50 million to the South African government. Yet in 2003, Pfizer backed away from the company's plan to license its AIDS drug for low-cost distribution in pork. If it was a car manufacturer, would you buy a car from them? We plan to honour our history and we will only bring to the world a vaccine that has been proven safe and efficacy. If Pfizer is trustworthy enough to be given one of the keys to vaccinate the population with something that was knocked up in a few months and with such a track record for safety and ethics, I know what I think. Do you?